Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. I love these Bible studies. You know why? Because we mm -hmm. have to gather, do Bible studies together, edify, go over the scriptures, have a part of a body, and then go out and preach the gospel. That's, that's the church. That's the call of the gospel to go out and preach okay. to all nations, teaching them to repent, believe on Jesus Christ, be baptized, make disciples to the ends of the earth, that Jesus came to bore our sins on the cross that we would forsake our life to find it and follow him. And we would give up this world, which is at enmity with God and follow Jesus Christ because he is God in the flesh as the only begotten son to take my sins, Amber's sins, the whole world, whoever will believe and then forsake this world and follow him. And then we give up the, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. And we're supposed to go out actually to the streets and do this. It says, compel them. From the highways and byways go out and preach this gospel to the ends of the earth and you know what jesus said he said once it goes out to the ends of the earth then the end will come so i first want to start this by saying um god has not forsaken israel there's a wicked doctrine out there saying god has divorced israel that makes god's god a liar it literally does and it makes his prophets liars he has not forsaken Israel, my friends. And right here in the book of Acts, we see that Peter didn't even know that it was also for the Gentiles. So I'm just going to name a few of the prophets, end times, uh, prophecies about Israel that have not yet come to pass. Damascus will be no more, Isaiah 17. There's going to be rubble there. Everything's going to turn on Israel, Ezekiel 38 and 39. Um, Gog Magog war. Uh, Russia is going to turn on them. Ethiopia. Uh, Iran, modern day Iran, which is called Persia, all these nations and more are going to turn on them. Saudi Arabia is going to stay out of it and Egypt's going to stay out of it. And they're specifically going to say this. Why are you going after them for booty? So Satan wants us to hate Israel. Michael, the archangel angel stands guard over Israel in Daniel 12 and Revelation. Israel is the apple of God's eye. Uh, God never sleeps or slumbers on Israel. All Israel shall be saved, Romans 11. And you're telling me that Israel is, is cut off. When Let me read Romans 11 to you. Some false prophet told me that God told him to, uh, that all of Calvary is apostate. I said, well, go preach it in front of their churches. Don't just be an internet warrior. I don't believe God told you that because God loves Calvary and he wants as many to be saved as possible, including Calvary, including Bethel, including all these churches. And God is going to make us go through tribulation for the people who are holding on to the wrong doctrines. But man, the people that just spout their mouth out and say that God's cut off Israel. Let me just read it to you. Romans 11. All Israel shall be saved. Romans 11, 26. Now, this is a mystery. There shall come out of, the, the, of Sion, the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness for Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel... They are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved of the father's sakes for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Yes. Okay. So if we go a little further, he says, he says, has God cut them off and forsaken them? No. So that right there tells you God did not divorce Israel. Um, Isaiah 66 who would have thought a nation in one day? Go look it up for yourself. I believe it's Isaiah 66, 8. So God has plans. He's regathering Israel. It takes that for this prophetic timeline to even fit with Matthew 24, Luke 21, Mark 13. So some of these internet preachers and this woman, she's come out of new age. She, she condemned me for gathering street preachers together um, maybe a year and a half, two years ago, whenever it was that certain people were there that were sodomites. So she's blaming me that somebody showed up. At least they heard the gospel. When she showed me who they were, I was like, oh, okay, thanks for showing me. I didn't invite them, but I'm not going to stop preaching to them, and I'm not going to kick them away from hearing the gospel that can save them. So because of that, she's harbored things against me and slandered me, and I forgive her, but she shouldn't be teaching. She taught something today that, that Satan wants us. Basically, let me go read it so I don't say anything wrong. And it's not the Holy Spirit that provoked her to say this. That's why I rebelled against this. This is not the Holy Spirit. She's out, she's out of her range. She needs correction. This is wrong to post something like this. Yeah. Let me go find it. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And see, this chapter today just happens to be on these things. Yes. It lines up. Yes. I don't want to speak wrong, so let me see exactly what she posted. And just show you, this is not good teaching, and this is not Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Sorry, this is taking so long. Give me a second. Let me see if I can find it here. Here it is. Let me see. Maybe she took the post down because it's not popping up. I couldn't find it. She might have taken the post down. Essentially, yeah. it said that we that Satan wants us to think. I think she took it down. Praise the Lord. All I'm trying to do is correct her that her post is not Holy Spirit. She posted something about how Satan wants us to believe that God still has plans for Israel. Now, that's not exactly how she said it, but that's what she's saying. And so Satan wants us to hate Israel. Truly, that's where Jesus comes back to, from the Mount of Olives. That's where he sets up his millennial kingdom. I just read you Romans 11. There's so many other scriptures, my friends. So this other guy who calls himself a prophet, who says that God divorced Israel, by definition, is a false prophet. Very easy to see that God did not divorce Israel. Just read Romans 11. Okay, right. so we're going to read uh, Acts 10, and we're going to see at this point in time, the Holy Spirit is now revealing to Peter that the Gentiles are coming into faith um, to, with more understanding, that they don't have to get circumcised, that, that you can eat things that God has not called unclean. He's, you know, so go ahead and read it, Amber. Okay. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of what was known as the Italian cohort. cohort. A devout man who feared God with all his household, gave alms generously to the people and prayed continually to God about the ninth hour of the day. He saw clearly in a vision an angel of God come in and say to him, Cornelius, and he stared at him in terror and said, what is it, Lord? And he said to him, your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and bring one Simon who is called Peter. He is lodging with one Simon, a tanner whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had departed, he called two of his servants and a devout soldier from among those who attended him. And having related everything to them, he sent them to Joppa. The next day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the housetop about the sixth hour to pray, and he became hungry and wanted something to eat. But while they were, they were preparing it, he fell into a trance and saw the heavens open and something like a great sheet descending, being let down by its four corners upon the earth. In it were all kinds of animals and reptiles and birds and their case or kill and eat but peter said by no means lord for i have never eaten anything that is common or unclean and the voice came to him again a second time what god has made clean do not call common this happened three times and the thing was taken up at once to heaven now while peter was inwardly perplexed as to what the vision that he had seen might mean behold the men who were sent by cornelius having made iniquity or I'm sorry, made inquiry for Simon's house, stood at the gate and called out to ask whether Simon was called Peter, whether Simon was called, Peter was lodging there. And while Peter was pondering the vision, the spirit said to him, behold, three men are looking for you. Rise and go down and accompany them without hesitation, for I have sent them. And Peter went down to the men and said, I am the one you are looking for. What is the reason for your coming? And they said, Cornelius, a centurion, an upright and God-fearing man who was well spoken of by the whole Jewish nation, was directed by a holy angel to send for you to come to his house and to hear what you have to say. So he invited them into his guests. So he invited them in to be his guests. The next day he rose and went away with them, and some of the brothers from Joppa accompanied him. And on the following day, they entered Caesarea. Cornelius was experienced, was expecting them, and had called together his relatives and close friends. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. 
But Peter lifted up, saying, Stand up, I too am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many persons gathered. And he said to them, You yourselves know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate with or to visit anyone of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without objection. I asked then why you sent for me. And Cornelius said, four days ago, about this hour, I was praying in my house at the ninth hour. And behold, a man stood before me in the bright, in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your alms have been remembered before God. Then therefore to Joppa and ask for Simon, who is called Peter. He is lodging in the house of Simon, a tanner by the sea. So I sent for you at once, and you have been kind enough to come. Now, therefore, we are all here in the presence of God to hear all that you have been commanded by the Lord. So Peter opened his mouth and said, truly, I understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be the judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins. Through Praise the Lord. Name. Yes, Jesus is Lord. While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word and the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles for they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. And Peter declared, can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise then they asked him to remain for some days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes. Glory Praise be to God. Glory be yes. to God. Oh, God, help me not hold any of this, uh, any, anything from these other people who are, who are saying that you forsook Israel, who are preaching against you, who are baby, baby Christians. I pray for their deliverance from that false teaching, Lord. I pray that they don't lead people astray into uh, hating Israel. Because I can tell you in Genesis 3.15, God had plans through Israel to bring us Messiah, Jesus Christ, to fix fallen earth. That's, that Eve was tempted to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay, so after that, God had a prophetic plan that never stopped. It didn't cut Israel off. I just gave you Romans 11. And so this prophetic plan shows you that Satan has always been against Israel. He didn't want uh, Jesus to, to come through the line of the tribe of Judah that he was prophesied to come through all the way from Genesis 49. He didn't want, he tried to kill the babies. He tried to kill that lineage. Uh, that lineage almost failed all the way through, um, but it never did because God makes it happen. So Jesus comes through the line of the tribe of Judah, uh, born of a virgin, Isaiah 7, 14, one crying out in the wilderness, Isaiah 40, verse 3, Isaiah 60, verse 8, the, the nation in one day. I've told you a lot of the prophecies already about Israel. So God did not cut Israel completely off. That would make us uh, susceptible to God changing his mind on us. And he's it, all we have to do is end in faith and follow Jesus Christ, believe on his finished work of the cross. And you yeah. see, Revelation shows you he hasn't forgotten Israel. What do we see in Revelation 7? 12 tribes of Israel marked on their forehead. Okay, we see uh, that, that they're going to see him who they pierced. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Every eye shall see him coming back on the clouds in majesty. Even those who pierced him. Who's he talking about? Israel. So I just, I just don't get how people can be so easy to hit like on their posts when it's blatant false teaching. They, they're going above their, their teaching credentials and look at what they do. None of them street preach. None of them fulfill the call of the gospel and go get persecuted 
all who live godly in Christ Jesus. Facebook is an alternate reality, my friends. And yes. it's part of the last day's delusion. Go out there and street preach. So many people false prophesying and, and never going out into the streets to find out who they really are. When you go out and actually preach, you have to actually deal with the spiritual war. You got to deal with it. You got to deal with it with, with yourself that you might have said the wrong word. The Holy Spirit comes and convicts you and it makes you dive into scripture to make sure you're operating in truth by the Holy Spirit, by the conviction. If you take that part out of it and all you are is a Facebook uh, last days self proclaimed prophet or teacher and you're, and, and you're a woman teaching over men saying, Israel, God has forsook Israel, please come down a little, come down a little level and actually go to the streets, go to the streets and actually hand out Bible tracts. You know, if you just want to find evil, but you never preach the gospel, who are you working for? You're right. never even preaching the gospel. And, and we, we don't like evil, but we still don't want them to die in their sins. And how are we going to, how, how did God use people to deliver uh, Saul who was persecuting Christians by the prophets that were willing to die for him or die for Jesus Christ. And then the Lord showed himself to him. So you got to be willing to die to, to save people by the power of Jesus. You got to go out there and preach Jesus. If you're just a Facebook, uh, you know, and they get so many views and it's, and they get so many likes and it's false teaching. And I usually don't say anything about it. I just go, gosh, I've seen other guys say that, that God called him a prophet to, to buy cryptocurrency. That's not true. That's not God telling you to buy cryptocurrency and tell his people to buy cryptocurrency so that you can have money for the end times. No, uh, -uh sorry. That's, that's, that's a, that's a false spirit. I see people hitting like on those kind of posts. Yes. So here we go. This is showing you right here. The Holy spirit is moving. It's teaching Peter later on in acts. Paul is going to have to rebuke Peter for not wanting to eat with the Gentiles. Paul's going to have to rebuke Peter and, and, uh, James, I believe, in the Galatians for taking it back to the law and talking about circumcision to be more, to be more holy. So there, there's a move of the Holy Spirit. We've got to let the Holy Spirit convict us and lead us and teach us and not go above our pay grade. And when we do, to receive correction and come back into what the truth is. So Revelation is fully pointing that there's a remnant in Israel. There's, there's fully one. I've already mentioned all the other scriptures. So to say that God has forsaken Israel is satanic. I'm just going to tell you right now it's satanic he has not forsaken israel there's a plan for israel there's a prophetic plan he makes his name great through israel he shows us that they messed up he sent real true prophets to show them they messed up read the parable of the wicked tenants understand scripture don't try to be a teacher one year into coming out a new age and then a, you know and never street preach and then start false judging and false condemning people there was a certain man in caesarea called cornelius centurion of what was called the Italian regiment, a devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms, which means gave money, generously to the people. So he took care of the people and prayed to God always. So this is a man of God at this level of understanding of Holy Spirit. Jesus has been, okay, well, here's some more, you guys. I mean, I'm just gonna keep giving it to you. It's just scripture. Where did Jesus go up to the clouds from? Mount of Olives in the book of uh, Luke, and it goes into the book of Acts, which we're teaching on right now. So Jesus rose from the Mount of Olives, and it's two men in white said, behold, he's coming back the same way he came to this spot. Jesus comes back and rules and reigns from that spot. So is, is really, is, does, is God done with Israel? Of course not. Has he cut them off? Romans 11 says he sure hasn't. And he's, you know what Romans 11 says? Be careful that you don't get cut off in your haughtiness. I don't know how to make it any more clear than that. I hope these people stop teaching false teaching because you don't want to work for Satan and go against God's area that God, that there's going to be mass killings there. And you literally are part of that. If you're saying to hate Israel or even alluding to that, it says there's going to be a remnant saved and there's going to be great killings in Israel in the last days and that Jesus has to cut it short. This is what the scriptures teach. Take one verse out of context from Jeremiah, this guy did, and said that Israel is, is divorced. God divorced him. That is, that's a lie. It's absolutely a lie. There's different parts to God's prophetic plan, and Israel is still part of it. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he had observed him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? 
So he said to him, your prayers and your alms have come up all the way. How beautiful is this? Let's look in the spirit. The prayers and the alms came all the way up for a memorial to God. What do we see in Roman, uh, Revelation chapter 5 when Jesus is declared worthy to open up the book and loose the seals? We see 24 elders carrying jars to the throne of God, which are the prayers and incense of the saints. I just, when I was praying this morning, the Lord showed me through prayer that our prayers are eternal. Our words are obviously eternal. That's why we've got to be careful to let, the, let God be true and every man a liar. Let's go to the scriptures because all our teaching is judged at a higher level when we're carrying the utensils of God. So we're supposed to have a fellowship of body that, that understands, walks together in the word, rebuked by the word, let the word be true. So look at what we see here. These prayers go up as a fragrance, as a memorial to God. Now send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose name is Peter. He is lodging with Simon a tanner, whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what you must do. And when the angel spoke to him, he departed. Cornelius called two of his household servants, a devout soldier from among those who waited on him continually. So when he had explained all these things to them, he sent them to Joppa. Now Peter gets a vision. So the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit out of 1 Corinthians 12, seeking out the gift of prophecy, faith, no, prophecy, word of wisdom, word of knowledge. So wisdom, a word of wisdom from God is deeper than a word of knowledge. It's a heavy, deep birth word that the Lord has given me many times. And then words of knowledge are about somebody else right there in front of you or, or something or a vision like this. Prophecy, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Faith is an extra gift. Healings, miracles, discerner of spirits, able to see in the spiritual realm, seeing all the way to heaven for some of them, for, from, for Elisha, for Stephan earlier in, in Acts 6, 7, 8, somewhere around there. And so, and understanding unknown languages and, and speaking in unknown languages, tongues, nine gifts. This is one of the gifts right here. So he has a vision. The next day, as they went on a journey, drew near the city. Peter went up on the housetop to pray. And about the sixth hour, he became very hungry and waited to eat. And while they made ready, he fell into a trance. So it's kind of like a daydream. And I've seen this. I've had this. I've seen things happen in, in, in while I'm standing up. Me too. You too, huh? Yes. Many times. Some of them have not yet come to pass and some of them have come to pass. Okay. So we don't, we don't go bragging about every time that happens because God has to show us what it really means. Now, this is very important. So we're hearing about it. And he saw heaven opened and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners, descending to him and let down to the earth. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, no, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. So he's holding his Jewish roots here. He's holding the Old Testament teachings here. And he's, he's devout. And a voice spoke to him again the second time, what God has cleansed, you must not call common. This was done three times to get to, 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 to validate it. Often we see in threes. God does things in threes. So when God does something to you or you believe it's from God, you don't have to just impulsively react on it. You could say, Lord, I don't understand it. Would you show it to me again? If he's really giving you something, he's going to show you more. He's going to confirm it. That's why you want to get confirmation. This was done three times. And the object was taken up into heaven again. Okay, so he got the vision. He got the word from the Lord. Now, while Peter wondered within himself what this vision, which he had seen, meant, behold, the men who had been sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. And they called and asked whether Simon, whose surname is Peter, was lodging there. While Peter thought about the vision, the spirit said to him, awesome, here's another word. Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, go down, go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men. So you hear the spirits telling him, stop doubting. I've sent these three men, and it's going to confirm the vision he just had. Then Peter went down to the men who had been sent to him from Cornelius and said, yes, I am he whom you seek. For what reason have you come? 
And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, one who fears God and has a good reputation among all the nation of the Jews, was divinely instructed by a holy angel to summon you to this house, to his house, and to hear words from you. Then he invited them in and lodged them. On the next day, Peter went away with them, and some brethren from Joppa accompanied them. And the following day, they entered Caesarea. Now Cornelius was waiting for them and had sailed, I'm sorry, and had called together his relatives and close friends. And Peter was coming in. Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But when Peter, Peter lifted him up and said, stand up, I myself am a man. So where do we see this? This is very important. We see this in Revelation in 19. 10, where John, getting the revelation of Jesus, he falls down to this angel and he says, get up, worship God, for Jesus is the spirit, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And we see it again in Revelation, it happens two times. So it's showing us Jesus is stronger, he is greater, there's no name ahead of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father, there's one mediator between God and man, Christ Jesus that there's no other name given among, among men to be saved other than Christ Jesus. He is the only one you ever worship, uh, pray in. You don't pray in angels' names. You don't do any of this stuff, and you don't worship man. And so we see Peter tell him that, the significance of it, okay? And so it's very important to, to make sure we see that. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many who had come together. Then he said to them, You know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company with or go one of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore, I came without objection as soon as I was sent for. I asked, then, for what reason have you sent me? So Cornelius said, four days ago, I was fasting until this hour and at the ninth hour i prayed in my house and behold a man stood before me in bright clothing and said cornelius your prayer has been heard and your alms are remembered in the sight of god send therefore to joppa and call simon here whose surname is peter he is lodging in the house of simon a tanner by the sea when he comes he will speak to you so i sent to you immediately and you have done well to come now therefore we are all present before God to hear all the things commanded you by God. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, in truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. So we're getting truth that we all, we know this because we got the rest of the Bible. We've studied uh, that, that God shows no partiality to Jew, Greek, male, female, rich, poor. You got to believe on Jesus. You got to forsake. It's harder for the rich man to go into heaven than for a camel to go through the eye of the needle. It's blessed to be poor. So we understand that what Jesus is teaching and what the Bible's showing is you got to be born again, dead to sin, not put money, not put family, not put anything above God, because you're going to be judged on how you have received the word and obeyed the word. Did you believe on Jesus? Did you forsake this life? Did you seek him? Did you walk after him? Did you, did you love his word? Did you let his word teach you and sanctify you and train you unto works, unto righteousness? Is God true and every man a liar? Or have you come up, up with your own doctrines that, that Christ rebuked? saying these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me, teaching the doctrines and precepts of men? Or did you forsake this life and follow Jesus and let the spirit open up the word of God to you that you would eat his word like the prophets? And if you say Israel is cut off and you don't even know that the the Bible's rebuking you sternly for that, then you're certainly not a prophet and certainly shouldn't be a teacher. Israel is not cut off. Look at right here, Peter's, Peter's thinking that Israel's the only thing in. I mean, he's still living that way. He's still living that way. And God is having to break that off of him to show him that it's not true. And so that's what this chapter is doing. We're going to see it again later in Acts. We're going to see uh, Paul have problems with a false prophet called Bar-Jesus. And he's going to handle it so severely that a lot of uh, some of the followers are going to split from Paul. So this is a move of the Holy Spirit. These people are willing to die for for Christ. They just saw him resurrected, rose again from the grave, showed himself to 500 witnesses over 40 days, 
took off from the Mount of Olives, went up on the clouds, the two men in white, their angelic host or their prophets, they could have been Elijah and Moses, whatever, we'll find out when we get to heaven. They say, why you look up uh, in, in the clouds, men of Galilee, the same Jesus is coming back on, on the clouds right back to this way where, where you just saw him leave. Okay, so I've given you so many scriptures that God is coming back to Israel. He's going to rule and reign from Israel. And there is, a, there is a remnant of Israel called Jacob's trouble. And at this point, you know, they're, they're not even able to really hang out with the Gentiles. So they're still holding on to their religious ways of the Old Testament. And, and when, we, when we hear we're saved by grace, not by works, Christianized Christians, we never sacrificed animals. We never tried to keep all the Torah. We never did any of that. So we're saved by grace through faith, not of works. We'd be able to boast, but we're not supposed to use that as an excuse to go back to sin and, and, and say that we're denying grace. And that's what a lot of the false teaching does is try to say that, you know, you're going back to the law when we never were, we never tried to keep the law. Let's be real. The Gentiles never even were grafted in by faith. So we, we never took it back to the law. We never made people, uh, get circumcised and try to keep the law you know some people right now are going back to the law they're called like hebrew israelites and some people are trying to you know say that you have to say yahweh and yeshua hamashiach and uh, yahuwah and you have to use hebrew names and they're they're going back to trying to be made righteous through works in a small way okay so now we see the gospel right here in truth i perceive that god shows no partiality but in every nation whoever fears him here we go Every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all, that word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all these things, which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree. Him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before by God, who earlier we found out 500 witnesses, even to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people. Okay, you guys, you Facebook guys, that all you do is, is bash people. All you do is, is condemn people and slander people. Why aren't you on the streets? That's what it, the gospel is to preach on the streets, compelling them to come in. If you're not a preacher, go out and handle Bible tracts. Go out and, and actually do what the gospel says to do. And to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be judged of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. Okay? Now, while I was reading that, I got a word. It might have been just me. It might have been from the Lord on why these people are saying that, you know, that God has been done with it, that God finished with Israel. They're going after conspiracy theories, Rothschilds. They're going after all of the things. They, they take the verses of Revelation 2 and 3, the synagogue of Satan, say they are Jews and are not. We know this. We know there's false apostles. We know there's those who are evil. We know there's Jezebel. We know there's a doctrine of Balaam. We know that. But that does not have any, you, going too far into conspiracy theories and actually getting perverted and you know, lying spirits come in. And no, no, do you ever want to say that, that God has forsaken Israel? You're literally working for Satan when you say that. You literally are, truly are. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. Whew, praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit, that's what we want. We want more Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, the seven spirits of God. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit. Settles. Spirit of wisdom. Spirit of understanding. Spirit of counsel, which is strategy, spirit of might, which is power, spirit of knowledge, spirit of fear of the Lord. So we want to have a fear of the Lord. We want to understand that we don't want to get haughty. Romans 11 says if you get haughty, you can get cut off. Has God forsaken Israel? No. Romans 11. I mean, why, how come people can't read scripture and, and just let it show them they're wrong? Wow. Praise the Lord. 
just to receive, I, I receive, I receive, you know, corrections. I receive, I stop wearing a hat. I receive corrections. We all supposed to receive corrections. We need, it says never forsake the fellowshipping of the saints. A lot of these people don't have any fellowship of the saints. They're not, you know, forsaking and going street preaching. They're looking for something wrong to, 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 oh, he, somebody showed up that was a sodomite at, at 50 people that showed up for, a, for an anti-abortion rally and then blame me for it. Instead of saying, hey, why don't we preach the gospel to the sodomites? <laughs> Isn't that what God wants? Yeah. Go out and preach instead of just trying to find evil against everybody. If that's all you're going to do and you don't preach, you're not actually fulfilling the gospel and you're going to get you know sucked in. It's the same thing with deliverance ministries. If all they do is focus on delivering people, you're focusing on the wrong things. You preach the gospel and let the Holy Spirit do everything. Let the Holy Spirit convict. That's what, the, that's what we see right here. After preaching the gospel, Holy Spirit fell on those who heard the word. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter answered, can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. And they asked him to stay a few days. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Forgive me for any um, frustration over, over any of the correction on, and also falsely accused. I was falsely accused. So forgive me. I, I don't, I don't, um, I pray that, that God doesn't harm them for accusing one of his people, that he would forgive them and that they would receive correction. So I'm sorry if I had any um, frustration from that, but it's just shocking that people would say that Jesus, that God has forsaken Israel. And God has divorced Israel. And then everybody hits like on that. Not everybody, but a lot of people following this person hit like on it. And it's false teaching. It's, it's horrible. It's like the Holy Spirit in me is not happy seeing people preaching against Israel. Because that's literally what Satan wants. Don't you know Hitler killed so many Jews and the churches didn't stand up and help Israel? And they, they, they just watched it and they pretended they were holy. And there's going to be a greater, a greater uh, than that that comes and turns on Israel. And the United States isn't there to help Israel. And God does his supernatural thing to come back to Israel. This is the scriptures. This is what the Bible teaches. Anything, Amber? No. Praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. <laughs> Let's praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's yes. give him glory. Praise you, Lord. Glory be to God. This day, Lord be Father, help these people come to the truth, Lord. Yes. Show them the truth, Lord God, yes. about Israel, Lord. Show them the scriptures. So I yes. pray they receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you that that woman took the post down because that means um, correction, hearing, Lord. Yes, and we pray for them to also find fellowship of the saints where they're not yeah. all alone renegades. I understand there, the church is falling away. It's called the great apostasy. I understand we've got the internet. We're learning a bunch of stuff. I understand all this, but that's the enemy trying to make us hate everybody and, and, and point out everybody's evil. And I'm, I'm, I have to get re rebuked from that by the Holy Spirit too. It's because we're seeing such great apostasy. We're seeing uh, adultery in the churches. We're seeing pro false prophesying about Trump and COVID. And, and we got to be careful that we, we don't become total renegades and just point out everybody else's evil and end up being used by evil. Look at Revelation 2. You, uh, I know your works, Ephesus. And Ephesus was a church, uh, an area where there was high witchcraft. People came down from the mountains and burned their witchcraft. So these guys had to be totally against witchcraft. This is Revelation 2. Hear the word of the Lord. And he's saying, I know your works. You've labored for my name's sake. You hate those who are evil. You've tested those who are apostles and found them to be liars. But this I have against you. You forgot your, you, repent, repent. Um, and do the first works. You forgot your first love. So they got so hard in heart. They found so much evil. And then the Lord's telling them, look, go back to your first works. R remember, you know, Jesus Christ. Remember your, maybe your intimacy with Jesus. Maybe their intimacy got lost along the way. Maybe they made too many false accusations. Whatever they did, Jesus had to rebuke them and say, I'm moving your candlestick unless thou repent. And then he says, uh, but this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. So Christ wants us to have great doctrine. Amen. But don't, yeah. you know, don't falsely accuse people. And if you do, 
repent. You know, we've made mistakes. Everybody's made mistakes. James says, if, if we were perfect in speech, you know, we've all, we've all made mistakes with our speech. And here's the thing is all words that are uttered are written down eternally. All mine. Wow. I need, the, I need the grace of Jesus. I need the love of Jesus. I need to have him teach me the word. I need to stay within the lanes of the word and in the lanes of scripture and, and love his word and get sanctified in his word. Like he says in John 17, sanctify, sanctify them in thy truth. Thy word is truth. So we got to put it. You know what he says? He says, you know, what he says in Psalms, he says, you put your word above your namesake. So you know what that, you know, the word is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. All the word points to Jesus Christ. Uh, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. We let his word wash us. We, we let his word sprinkle us with his blood. First Peter one. Once we get to that day where, where it's made manifest who we truly are, you know, let's, let's not carry in stuff that's going to get burned away. That's motivated by pride and by envy and covetousness. So we want to preach his word that even the most evil people will not go to hell. We want to, we want everybody to, to receive the word of God and not prognosticate that, that these people are never going to receive it too early. We don't want to do that. My friends, Paul says, don't judge before the appointed time, meaning a final judgment, judge by the word of God to, to rebuke, exhort, uh, uh, for all, for all, uh, godliness, you know, but don't judge that Satan is, you know, and that God is done with Israel. And that Satan actually wants us to be for Israel. That was the post that Satan yeah. actually wants us to be for Israel. I mean, I was like, did she just say that? <laughs> did she really say that? Cause it's the opposite of that. Satan wants us to hate Israel. Everything's going to turn on Israel. Study the Bible. They're all going to, it's all going to turn on Israel. That's the, gr the great, terrible day of the Lord. And then they're going to see him who they pierced and mourn. As a, as, as a person mourns for his firstborn, it says in Zechariah, thank you, Lord, for giving me the scripture right now. Okay, so he's surely not done with Israel. We're praying. You know what, you know what Romans 11 says? It says, I, I am praying for Israel. I'm praying that, that they come into it by, by, um, by jealousy. That's what he's saying. So we, I, have, I pray for Burl Bayer, who always comes against me every morning. Burl Bayer, Doug Denhart, Gary Goldberg, Gary Goldstein, Gary Greenberg, Phil Duran. I pray for Jews. Pray for them because that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to pray for Israel. It says in Psalms, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Holy, 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 holy are you, Lord God. God bless us in Jesus' mighty name. I pray, uh, Kimberly, Ava, Adelia, Michael, pray healing over that house. I pray for uh, all the street preachers. I mean, they have a tough job because they're going out into the streets, and Facebook wants to come against them who don't even street preach and condemn them and accuse them and all this. So I just pray blessing, uh, mercy on all them, mercy on me, praise be your holy name, oh God, God bless you tomorrow, Amber, when you go out street preaching with Corey, God bless uh, the favor on us today, if we go out street preaching in San Clemente, that we would have good fellowship with the saints, preach the word, that God's Holy Spirit will bring people confession, conviction, maybe somebody gets delivered from spirits today, at least they're going to hear that suicide spirit can be cast out, they don't have to listen to voices, there's so much in where I live right now in Orange County, there's so much suicide and overdoses on this drug. It just got posted again. And we're supposed to be out there street preaching instead of just being on Facebook. Yes. Truly. truly amen. Amen. Glory be to God. I, I really so thankful for these Bible studies. I've really leaned on them to fellowship with the saints. So God bless you, Amber. God bless your family. Praying always for your family, your kids, and your whole family. Jesus mighty name. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye. Goodbye.